What's up guys, GT here. So, if you know the channel, most of my videos are pretty well scripted. I think a lot uh, before speaking on anything on this channel. But for this video, I wanted to really speak from the bottom of my heart and really talk about a subject which has been one of the most asked questions on this channel. So, you know, before I go ahead and offend anybody and you let me know in the comments, these are my thoughts and I'm speaking completely impromptu here in front of you. And, uh, you know, if you don't agree with them, definitely you might be in a different situation uh, than me, but these are completely my thoughts around the subject. So what's the subject? The subject is one of the most asked questions, as I said on the channel, whether I am going to upgrade to an AxeFX3 or an FM3 anytime soon. So short answer, I am not going to update to an FM3 or an AxeFX3 right now. Maybe sometime in the future, but not at the moment. And if you have the time and patience to bear me and hear me, I'll give you a couple of reasons why I'm not doing that. The first and foremost is I always look at gear as an investment. I probably have enough gas like all of you do and I always want to buy a new gear but whenever I think of buying new gear, I think of it as an investment, uh, investment towards myself as a musician, investment towards myself as becoming a better guitar player. I don't have the riches or the funds to go ahead and collect guitars and gears. I wish I had but you know, I don't. So I have to very carefully choose what gear I buy and when I buy it. What do I mean by that? So the first example I can give you is the first JP guitar that I purchased, the JP6 or the JP6 Stealth uh, was my first big investment of purchasing good gear. And I thought that magically over the night or over the month, maybe my playing is going to drastically improve and I'm going to become, uh, you know, the next John Petrucci, to be honest. <laughs> And boy, oh boy, I was wrong. So uh, here's what my thoughts are about good gear. Good gear definitely makes you improve yourself better. If that's the best word I can find of, it definitely motivates you to get better. But at the end of the day, you have to put in those hours. And I'm a firm believer of the fact that more than 50% of your tone comes through your fingers and it's the way you hold the guitar, it's the way you play a particular note, it's got to do a lot with your dynamics, how clean your playing is. You know the things, right? You know the facts. There are so many things that go into, you know, getting a good tone. And I feel that my playing is something that I really, really need to improve a lot more on from where it is right now. I've definitely improved quite a lot from where I was, don't get me wrong, you know. The AxeFX2 has been a major contributor towards that. When I think of new gear, I think of them as investments towards myself, towards my playing and improving my playing. And I feel that the AxeFX2 is absolutely crushing it for me and it's really, really getting me there. And that's the reason probably I don't think I need an AxeFX3 at the moment. I think this unit is so incredible in itself, even in 2021, that it's, uh, you know, changing my life every day <laughs> for the lack of a better word every day i practice i ask myself the same question if i were to get all of petrucci's gear today all of his amps all of his guitars all of his studio equipment to my disposal will i sound like john petrucci now that's not the eventual goal right you obviously want to have your own voice as an artist but we all start like this right we all start a journey like this we hear a guitar player we feel that oh he sounds incredible i want to play like him so on that journey, I feel that I will not probably even sound close to what John Petrucci is, even if I'm given all of his gear. And the reason is pretty simple, right? He's got, you know, decades of experience uh, and practicing behind his back, which I probably don't have and probably I never will have as well. But, you know, if I get the AxeFX3 today and I get the JP2C amp, is it going to make me sound much better as coming closer to John Petrucci? Perhaps 5%, but beyond that, it's pretty much my playing that's getting me there, right? So if I want to invest in something, I definitely want to invest in my playing. The second reason that I have is definitely in terms of how much I've explored the unit and whether I feel I've, I've kind of exhausted my knowledge base of it. I've just scratched the surface, to be honest. This unit has so much potential and so much uh, capability that 
I haven't even explored probably more than 10% of it. If I were to put it in numbers, I may be over exaggerating as well, to be honest. Even the AMP block, for example, has so many settings alone that I haven't even explored. You, the tonal possibilities are endless. And whatever you can do on the AxeFX2, you can pretty much do on the AxeFX3 as well. So there are things which you can do on the AxeFX3, which you can't do here on the 2. But that's all right with me. You know, as of today, the AxeFX2 is officially a legacy product and it's not going to receive any more updates. And the AxeFX3 just got the new update of the Cygnus modeling software. Am I jealous? <laughs> not really. A little bit, yes. That's the new software sounds incredible and it's definitely something that I wish the AxeFX2 had. But can I do without it? Absolutely, yes. Uh, there's enough, you know, for the lack of a better word, juice in there to get your tones flowing and get you to create the kind of tones you want to create. And I, as I said, I've just touched the tip of the iceberg. Maybe there is so much more to explore. And that's a question I want you to ask yourself as well. Have you explored every amp inside the XFX2? Have you explored every possible sort of a tone that you want to create that you feel that, yes, I am now ready to make take on the next chapter which is the AxeFX3 which to be honest is pretty much the same things that you got in here plus a few more things definitely and at least I feel that way uh, it's got the same amps uh, which the AxeFX2 have but maybe slightly sounding a little better and that brings me to the third reason right uh, this is a fairly expensive unit the AxeFX3 is definitely expensive and I am not going down the route of FM3 purely because I am pretty much going to be inside my room playing here for you guys. So I think the FXFX3 suits better for me in terms of my need. And uh, the FM3, I think if I was to play live, would be a much better unit to use. But I think in terms of computational power, I would go for the AxeFX3 if I'm ever upgrading anytime soon. Uh, so as I, as I was saying that these units are fairly expensive uh, here in Australia. And for me to make that leap, I think... I would rather invest in something which I am sonically missing at the moment. I know the AxeFX3 has a lot of more amps which I am not having in the AxeFX2. But you know, think of it this way, I don't have a 7, seven string guitar. Can the AxeFX3 make me magically sound like I have a 7 string guitar? No. I would rather take that whatever little money I have to invest and I would rather invest it in. Uh, a component which enables me to get that sound which I cannot get with my gear at the moment for example a Les Paul right I cannot really get that sweet sound of a Les Paul guitar using the JP15 which is a pretty high-end guitar but that sound is unique uh, and that's the reason I bought the Fender Stratocaster as well because single coil is a single coil you won't get that from a humbucker ever uh, in my opinion and same with the seven string guitar, right? Uh, you can't get the seven string guitar sound out of a six string guitar because you can detune and stuff like that. But you know, I have a floating bridge and it's always kind of messy to uh, deal with different tunings if, if you just have one guitar. So I definitely look at investing into a fixed bridge sort of a, you know, seven string guitar maybe. There is no end to expenses that you can put into kind of buy in gear, but I want to look at something which is mid-ranged and maybe invest in something like that. So those are my three reasons as to why I am not upgrading to the AxeFX3 and I wanted to answer that in detail to everybody who's asked that question. Uh, the question is absolutely valid and I would ask the same as well if I were you. So if you stuck so far with me in this video, do me a favor, please. Please do let me know as to if you are upgrading to an AxeFX3, what are your reasons? If you're sticking with the AxeFX2, what are your reasons? And if you're with me on the channel, then definitely I will be creating more content on the AxeFX2. If you're not, please do go ahead and subscribe and let me know your thoughts in the comments, guys, always. I really, really like reading your comments. I really appreciate them and it definitely keeps the motivation going for me. So until I see you guys in the next video, make sure you stay safe. Keep rocking guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.